and be real careful. And you get up so the tops of these claws look a little bit warm. See, if I would have painted that down first, that might have been smarter. But so I've got just a tiny little bit of raw sienna to make the tops of those claws look just a little bit warm. Raw sienna and burnt sienna are, are colors I use a lot, and that harmonizes my big shapes. So then it's like some people might say, well, if you paint these big puzzle pieces and put them together, how does your picture harmonize? Well, I try to use the same colors in a lot of my shapes, and then they just naturally kind of look like it fits together and belongs. Okay, so I've got a little bit of warmth. You know, that pure white of the paper, I love leaving pure white like the rest of us. It's just so wonderful to see that white, but it really does blind the eye to what colors really are. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of flattening my shapes. Some people try to make ultra three-dimensional shapes. I'm really thinking in terms of silhouettes. And you can't believe how dry this paper gets so fast. Okay, I'm going to have to maybe work a little piece at a time. Yeah, and then I'm going to have some perspective. I'm going to have some smaller clouds going to the distance here. But I'll grab a little bit of this purple. Let's see what that looks like. And then I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna into it. I do like to try to put opposites onto opposites as much as I can. That's a little bit too dark and foreboding. I don't like that. So let me get back, get back into my cobalt. Yeah, that's a little bit pleasant. So I'm going to come up with a nice. <laughs> shadow shape underneath these clouds. It's hard to look through the back of a masonite. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm thinking the same thing, but just in reverse. I'm trying to make some exciting shadow shapes. I like to vary some edges. It's nice to have some hard edges and some soft edges. I'm trying to keep this little edge this little rim light almost of light raw sienna. You know, it's really hard to it's really hard to put a color down dark enough the first time. It's like we all kind of tiptoe into colors. And when you tiptoe in, you just have to keep adding and adding and adding. <laughs> So this is a cloud that's right in the foreground here, or I should say the foreground of the sky is these clouds up above you are the closest. Okay, my paper is drying, so I, in watercolor it's a real so real hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. And when that paper's wet and you're painting a big sky, you got to go, go, go. I don't see a whole lot of real big skies painted. Okay. All right, I'm going to tip this and get this bleeding. I paint, when I paint at home, I paint on about 20 degree angle. So I've got some neat things happening, some neat colors mixing on the paper. This is a little too round for me. It looks like a big, a big butt or a big bottom or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to kind of soften. And of course, I'll probably make it look more like something. <laughs> OK. So. The variety of clouds is just always amazing. I, I get up early and I go down to, to Bay Point Park in Red Wing and just watch the sunrise over the over the little hill in town. It's kind of neat. Thing. OK, 
Okay, and again, what I'm doing is I'm taking my eye and I'm traveling it across the edge of this shape. It's lost, it's found, it's lost, it's found, it's hard edge, it's dry brush edge, it's exciting. I've got this really exciting action line coming across. Sometimes the cloud is thinner and the light shines through, sometimes it's thicker. Can you conk your head? <laughs> so it's very, very colorful. So evidently this is limestone outcroppings as white of the paper. And I could I could pull frisket out and use frisket. In fact, I was going to frisket out just a couple little birch trees in the foreground. Maybe I'll do that at the braid. Just, <coughs> I might overpaint them later, but just to have just a little bit of detail in the foreground. So this is, oops, I just did what I didn't want to do. This is looking straight across at Maiden Rock. And so I've got the, the shape that I want to paint. I've painted clear water down. And then I'm going to try to paint some clear, some pigment, let the pigment mix right on the paper. So I'm going to just charge in with some pure burnt sienna. So that's really bright. Now I'll take a uh, take a compliment. I'll take the opposite of that. I've got kind of a cobalt blue and a Windsor Windsor mix. And I'm trying to be pretty direct with this, and I have to make sure that they mix on the paper. top of each other. I'm trying not to, to paint them exactly on top of each other. I want to have areas where they mix and make a nice gray. And then I want to have areas where they stand alone. So run this back and forth a little bit. Oops, I splashed up into my sky. That could be a bird. It could be an eagle <laughs> dropping a fish right there. So I'm really trying to let these pure colors I should probably pay attention to that. I don't want to run it right up into my sky. So, <laughs> there's just something beautiful when you just let it do its own thing and paint itself. You know, you see the title of books, let the watercolor paint itself, and blah, 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 blah. Just a little bit of, of blue shadow on the limestone. And I do like this brush because it is amazing. You can get a pretty thin line with the corner. And, and this will be the road kind of coming around. around the corner that I just squirted in with my brush a little bit. Okay, so that's kind of a neat, I'm trying to wonder if that's going to be a good, a good value. It's going to dry a little bit darker. I want to make sure that this bottom, like I've got on my sketch here, this bottom shape is really going to punch in dark. It's going to be a really dark value. I think I kind of like the, what's going on so far. I could put a little bit of, sometimes almost a little graffiti, a little gestural stuff. <coughs> I'm going to put a little bit of lake color here on these trees. Just a little bit. Hopefully my lake's going to be that color. 
<laughs> so that as I paint these trees dark around it, I'm going to have little holes <coughs> of light coming through. I was going to use a little frisket down here, but I don't think I'm going to. I just changed my mind. Frisket is a really interesting thing. It's a <coughs> as people know, it, it, it's wonderful to mask things, and I use it quite a lot. But it leaves such a brittle hard edge. A lot of people will make their painting and they'll frisk it out their little white picket fence or their little birch tree, and then the painting is all fresh, and you've got this little hard edged brittle piece. And so I take my acrylic brush, which is a little stiffer brush a lot of times, and after I take the frisket off, I'll come in with that acrylic brush and soften the edges. And I really try to manipulate the edges a lot after I take the frisket off. And, and you need to think about, when you use frisket, not only masking the positive shape, but masking the negative shape to create an interesting edge. So use it both ways. Paint everything but the tree, and then paint the tree in the middle and pull the frisket off and see what kind of an edge you get. You'll get an edge that you just can't paint with a brush. And that's what I do with this style over here and the paddle boat and everything. I'm painting everything but what I want. So all the negative shapes I'm painting in frisket and what is between the frisket is what I'm getting paint on. So it's thinking of frisket in reverse. Um, okay. Enough about that. I'm going to paint, when I paint water, it's going to be a fairly calm day. I am laying in horizontal strokes. I'm going to keep the, I want to keep little areas on this paper dry so that I can get some pure white in there. And I'm going to start out by, by dropping in a little, a little raw sienna. It's kind of funny how I need this offhand for balance, don't you think? <laughs> um, I don't know if you saw this little piece of tape up here, but I, I have a book on, uh, it's called Plain Air Painting, and it's written by a California artist named Frank LaLumia. And his little mantra is, see it, simplify it, and state it. And when I teach my classes, that's what my handouts say. It, instead of trying to learn how to paint, you really have to try to learn how to see and be more observant. And I think we kind of chase the books, and we, re we read all the books, and we want to paint like this guy, and paint like this guy, and paint like this guy. But you really need to just almost learn how to see differently instead of learn how to paint differently. And once you finally get to that point, well then your style will develop and, and you will kind of sort of arrive. Maybe. <laughs> Was that confident? <laughs> I'm trying to take, I'm trying to do big horizontal strokes and I'm trying to take a little bit of the, and get a little bit of the sky color down in my water. I don't want to get a completely different palette. A lot of little lines, it would be nice if I could just get gutsy and kind of combine some of them and make a big broad statement. I don't know, we'll keep going. <laughs> you know, I find and I think a lot happens to a lot of a lot of painting. If you don't get a firm idea from the beginning and do a value sketch and have an idea where you're going, you have a tendency to paw around with the paintbrush a little bit. And that's a habit that I see in people and I do it myself. And it, you're almost hoping that the paintbrush solves the problem and makes the painting. And, and when you start pawing around with the paintbrush, I find I, I start not getting some results that I want. I'm going to try to just lay down a big bold stroke here. Okay, that's kind of a neat color. Line, be real active and fun, and your eyes 
going to have all this stuff to be entertained by. So let me see if I can do this. I'm still trying to see if I can let that dry. I'll just stand. I'll stand and admire it for a couple minutes and let that dry. <laughs> but I, I'm going to try to pick up. I've got all sorts of really bright colors, and I always kind of like to err on the bright side because you can always dull it down, but it's, it's so hard to brighten it up and whiten it up. So I have a tendency to save a little bit more whites and to punch it a little bit more because it's so much easier to go duller than it is to, to go brighter. So that's my excuse for why it's so bright. Okay, I am going to clean it. A combination of two words. Um, I think I'm going to try to put a little bit of tree trunks in there. You know, another way that I don't know, it's, it's kind of tedious a little bit, but I can paint this bottom shape, and if I want to put a birch trunk in there, you can frisk it and frisk it and leave the little opening in the middle and then take a toothbrush and just lightly open that little passage up if you want a little light trunk in there. Okay. See, normally I, I use, I've got a couple sponges and sometimes I just go crazy with some sponges. So in my mind I have this autumn scene and I have, I know that if I mix burnt sienna and Windsor green, to, Windsor blue together, I get kind of an army green. Get kind of a dulled olive green. <clears throat> so I'm, my plan is, is I'm going to lay burnt sienna down, in copious quantities, <coughs> with permanent rose, and then I'm going to come over the top of that with Windsor blue. This is like painting the Golden Gate Bridge because every time I get to the one side, <laughs> it's dry already. It just is like drying instantly. I'm going to have to get. Serious here. Yeah, some uh, you know there are a lot of watercolor artists that'll say you can't. Put the, I know a lot of you have your watercolors down in a palette like this dried. Some people say you can, you got to squirt fresh out every time. I just like the convenience. I'm kind of lazy, so I look at that beautiful, pure burnt sienna. It just looks like an orange house paint almost. <laughs> so I'm going to really, and I'm going to have to be dark enough. Cover ground faster. I gotta really go, 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 go. <laughs> and I've got to have a top edge. It's kind of exciting. <coughs> okay. 